In this video, we're going to talk about how to record bonds issued at a discount. Uh, specifically, we're going to get into the amortization of the discount, uh, the effective interest method for accounting for all this. And But first off, you might be wondering, why would bonds ever be issued at a discount to begin with? What are we even talking about here? Well, let's say that your firm decides they want to issue some bonds. And they say, okay, well, we're going to put these bonds together. We need to have uh, the lending agreement. We need to get some attorneys involved. We, there's, a, there's a lot of legwork uh, going on here. And, and initially, you say, okay, these bonds are going to pay 6%. But by the time you're done with all this legwork and, and paperwork, uh, it turns out when you come to issue the bonds, uh, the market rate, so the market rate for bonds at that time, is 8%. And so now you've got a problem, right? Because your bonds pay 6% interest, right? But the day, by, by the time you finish all this stuff and get ready to issue the bonds, uh, the market rate is actually now 8%. So instead of going back and trying to change all this and, and creating a bunch of hassle, there's a much easier way of dealing with it. You can just say, well, we'll just issue the bonds at a discount, right? So let's say that it's a, it's a $100 bond. You just say, well, we'll give it out for 90 Right, so you basically say, okay, let's just do a discount, and that'll take take advantage or um, address the fact that now our bonds pay interest that's at a lower rate than what the current prevailing market rate is. So people will buy our bonds. But now we've got this issue of, okay, well, how do we figure out what the discount is? How do we determine that? What is a proper discount? And to to determine this, uh, basically, we're going to get into some things that are going to involve the time value of money. We're going to basically discount um, using uh, present value, and we're going to take the present value of the principal, and then we're going to take the present value, the present value of the principal, and the present value of the interest payments, and that's going to give us the carrying value of the bond. It's going to give us the carrying value, and then from that carrying value, we're just going to take the difference with the face value, and that's going to give us our discount. That's going to give us our amount of discount, and then we're going to amortize that discount over time. It's actually going to become part of interest expense. And I know this is a little abstract. It's difficult to maybe think of all these there's all these moving parts. So we're going to work through an example. Um, so let's just walk through it. And if you if you bear in mind before I even get to the schedule, I should say if you if you haven't. Uh, if you're not familiar with time value of money, I suggest you go back and, and watch the videos on that uh, first. But let's say let's say in our example, and let me just partition this off. Let's say in our example, we uh, our firm issues three-year bonds, so they'll become due. They'll have a maturity in three years. Issues three-year bonds with face value what we're going to have to pay back at the end of a million dollars. So let's say a million dollars due in three years. Okay. Now the stated rate, the stated interest rate, and by stated interest rate I'm talking about in our original example uh, that 6% and actually we'll just we'll use 6% again here. What the, the, This is the actual interest that these bonds are going to pay, not the market rate. We're not we're not talking about the market rate when we got the stated rate. We're talking about on the actual bond, it's going to pay six percent interest, All right? So it's going to have a stated interest rate of six percent, and then we'll say this is the interest will be paid semi-annually, so twice a year, um, and and that's actually if you compute that. Now you've got a million times six percent. Uh, that's actually that's going to give you sixty thousand dollars, but it's due twice a year. So we divide the sixty thousand by two, and that's going to give us thirty thousand dollars a year. So we've got two times a year we're paying thirty thousand in interest on these bonds, right? Now that's the again that's the stated rate that's that's used to calculate the amount of the interest payment, and that's pretty much it. That now we're going to get into uh, the market rate. Let me just just ignore that word schedule for a moment. So we're going to get into the market rate of interest. And again, similar to our example above, let's just assume uh, that it's eight percent. 
So when we issue these bonds, our bonds actually pay interest at a rate of 6%, but the market rate is 8%. And we're going to have to go and we're going to calculate uh, the present value of these bonds um, and the present value of the interest payments. And actually, I, I wasn't going to, to write that out, but let me just let me go ahead and, and let me do the formula for that anyways, just to make sure you, you have it down. So the present value of the principal, this is, we're talking about that million dollars, right? Now this is going to be the present value of a lump sum. So in the numerator, we're going to have a million dollars, right? That's our lump sum. That's the amount we want to know the present value of. Now we're going to use the market rate. Remember that market rate was 8%. But remember, we pay interest semi-annually. So what we're actually talking about here, uh, instead of talking about 8% over three years, we're talking about 4% over six periods. Right? We think when we do time value money, we think in terms of periods. So we've got this million dollars. And then in the denominator, we're going to have 1 plus our interest rate, 0.04 to the number of power uh, to the power of the number of periods so six periods right so that's why we've got six here so what does that yield that yields 790,315 so what is this this is the present value of the lump sum that principal that million dollars that is going to be due at the at the maturity of the bond but we also have to take the present value uh, of the interest payments so present value interest payment, just abbreviate here. Uh, now this formula is going to be a little bit more complicated, but we're just using the formula for the present value of an ordinary annuity. So we're going to take the cash payment, just $30,000, and again, we use the stated rate, that's 6%, um, to get this, right? And it was actually 6% of a million, but then divide it by two because we make two payments a year. So we use the stated rate to get this, but then when we actually have our little formula here, which is going to be 1 minus, and again, this is just uh, the present value of an ordinary annuity for 1.04. And again, this 0.04 is that 8%, the market rate, but divided by 2 because we're, we're doing this you know twice a year. And then that's to the 6th power because there are 6 periods. And then we take all of this and divide it by 0 0.04. Again, that's half of our market rate. Right? So this is going to give us 157,264. And that is the present value of the interest payments that we're going to be making on this bond. Right? So now we take the 793.15, which is the present value of the principal, and then the present value of the interest payments, we add them together. And what is that going to give us? That's going to give us the proceeds that we get from our bond issuance, right? The actual cash that we get, 947579 So when we issue these bonds, because our interest rate that our bonds pay is lower than the market rate at the time we issue the bonds, we issue the bonds at a discount. So we, And the discount means that even though we have to pay a million dollars at the end of three years back to the lender, Right now, we're not receiving a million dollars. We're receiving $947,579. And the difference between a million and this amount is the discount. So here's our discount on our bonds payable. That is $52,421. So now we're going to amortize this discount, and it's actually going to become part of interest expense as we amortize it. But let's go ahead, and now we can use these amounts uh, to go ahead and, and plug in uh, to what, what's going to be called our effective interest uh, scheduling table, which I'm just going to bring up here. So I should say this, let me just, this 947.579 here, that's also called the carrying value of our bond, carrying value of our bonds, right? And I'm just going to put that, let's see, let's put it right here, 947.579. So again, present value of the lump sum payment and the interest payments right there. That's our initial carrying value of the bonds 
on January 1st, right? Now on this date, there's no interest payment. We're not gonna have an interest payment for six months. Our first interest payment is here. And so ultimately over time, we're gonna have six interest payments. Right, and that's what these dates represent. Every six months, we're gonna have an interest payment, but right off the bat, this is the day we're actually getting the money. Um, so what, what journal entry will we have on day one? Well, we would have, let me just scroll down here. We'd have cash, we're receiving 947.579, right? Now we're gonna credit bond payable for a million, right? We have to pay back a million and we're getting 947579. What's the difference? The difference is going to be this discount. Discount on bond payable. 52421. Okay, now we're going to amortize this over the life of the bond so that we don't have this discount sitting uh, in our balance sheet forever. So let's go back to our table. I know there are a lot of moving parts here, so let me just walk you through the table. Again, this is our initial date where the journal entry we just made. We issue the bonds. Uh, this is the amount of cash we receive. It's also the carrying value for the bonds initially. But now there's no cash paid here because there's no interest, and we're not amortizing any of our discount yet. Now, let's go to our first interest date right here. Okay, Now we've got to pay some interest expense. Uh, because it's been six months. See here? Now it's six months into the life of the bond. We said we'd pay interest semi-annually. Now how do we how much cash do we pay? Well that's that's pretty simple, right? We already we already calculated that. We're gonna pay out thirty thousand. Now in case you're wondering how do we get this thirty thousand, remember we take that million dollars, right? The million dollars of the bond, and we say, okay, that million dollars we multiply it by the stated interest rate, which is six percent, but then we divide by two because we're going to make two interest payments a year. Okay, that's where we get this thirty thousand dollars. Now our interest expense is going to be different than the actual cash paid because we've got this. We issued the bond at a discount. So how do we do that? Well, we're just going to take this amount, nine forty-seven five seventy-nine and multiply it by that market rate, by the effective rate of interest. And when we talk about effective rate, we're saying, okay, we had this rate that was on the bond, but we had to issue the bond at a discount. So effectively, what is our interest expense? Well, we just take this amount, this 947.579, and we multiply it by 0 0.04, which again was the market rate was 8%, but it's divided by two because it's twice a year. So that's going to give us, when we take this carrying value and we multiply it by the market rate, that's going to give us interest expense of 37903 Now you see there's a difference here, right? The interest expense is actually higher than the cash paid. So the difference, this 37903 minus the 30000 is $7,903, and that's going to go in the amount of discount that we amortize during this period. Now, let's take a look at the journal entry we would have to represent what's going on here. So let me just scroll down here. So now, and just, just disregard this entry for a moment. Okay, let me change, uh, change colors. Uh, now we're gonna have interest expense. Again, we just calculated, I don't wanna scroll back up to the table and give you a vertigo. Interest expense, 37,903. That's just taken from our table. And we paid out cash of 30,000, right? So this 30,000 was based on the stated rate on our bonds. The interest expense was based on the market rate, the effective rate of interest that we're paying. And the difference in this case is gonna be a credit, which is gonna be amortization, I'll just abbreviate here, of discount, bond discount. So that discount that we set up Right, that discount, we're amortizing it, so it's going down over time. Eventually, it's going to go to zero, and in this case, it's just the 7903. Right, so that, and we're going to every time we pay interest, we're going to have a similar uh, a journal entry. We're going to have interest expense. Since there's a discount, it's going to be more than what the actual cash paid out in interest is, and then we're going to have that credit to amortize the bond discount. So let's go back up to our table. 
So now what do we do with this carrying value of the bonds? Well, we're just going to take that and we're going to add it to the discount that's been amortized, right? We add that amortized discount to it. So now the carrying value, let me change colors again. Now the carrying value is going to be 955,482. And now we just repeat the process. Now, first of all, we can easily say right off the bat every year the cash paid in interest is going to be 30,000. So let me just fill that in because we know the stated rate is not going to change. It's not based on the carrying value or anything like that. So that's always going to be 30,000. And we've got six payments. There's six periods. So that's always going to be 30,000. But how do we calculate the interest expense in this period, the second time we pay interest? Well, we take our new carrying value of the bonds, which is now higher than it initially was, and we multiply that by 0 0.04. Multiply by 0 0.04, which again is the market rate divided by 2. It's at 8% divided by 2. And so that's going to give us interest expense of 38219 Now again, we've got a difference between the 30000 and the 38219 So we've got to uh, amortize a discount here. 8,219 is the discount. That's just the difference between these two numbers here. And now we add this discount that's been amortized to the carrying value of the bonds, and it's going to increase it again. So now we're at 963,701. Now I'm not going to beat you to death here with journal entries, but again, if we were debiting interest expense, we debit it for this amount, and then we'd have the credit of the cash being paid out, and then also a credit to the discount uh, that's being amortized, right? That would be our journal entry to reflect that interest payment. Now, we just repeat the same process. We again take the carrying value, the most recent one, multiply it by the 0 0.04. That's gonna give us our interest expense. Here it's gonna be 38,548. And that's gonna give us 8,548 as the discount that's amortized. And our carrying value of the bonds is gonna be 972,249. We multiply this by 0 0.04 to get our interest expense for the new period. It's going to be 38,890. And then we've got 8,890 as our discount. And then 981,139 is our carrying value after adding in this discount. Now, again, we multiply the carrying value times uh, 0 0.04, half of our market rate. That's going to give us 39246 for interest expense, 9246 for discount amortized, and then the carrying value of the bonds after we add in the discount that's been amortized, 990385 And then final time, we multiply again the carrying value by half the market rate. It's going to give us 39615 for interest expense, and then the discount amortized, is going to be 9,615. And when we add this to our carrying value, it's going to give us $1 million, which is the face value of the bonds. So now you see that what we did was we started with a carrying value that was discounted. And then over time, we amortized more and more of that discount. And eventually, it got us back to the face value of the bonds, which is ultimately what we have to pay back at the end, right? Here we've got all the interest payments we're accounting for, uh, and we're accounting for the interest expense, the, the, the amortization. Ultimately, we have to pay back a million dollars. That's the face value of the bonds. And this schedule, this effective interest rate schedule, is just helping us reconcile the fact that the interest we're paying out in each period is different than the interest expense that's going to show up on our income statement because of the fact that there was this difference between the, the interest rate our bonds paid and what the market rate was. We account for that using the discount, which we amortize over time and add to the carrying value to ultimately get us back uh, to the face value of the bond.